The new Prime Minister, Sir Keir Starmer, tells the Cabinet meeting after a landslide victory, so now we get on with our work. We're going to read into this more from Sky News, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Elite here with an article from Sky News with the headline that the new Prime Minister, Sir Keir Starmer, tells his cabinet meeting after the landslide victory. So now we get on with our work. While the Labour leader said it's absolutely fantastic to welcome his top team to Downing Street, he warns there is a huge amount to do in the face of a series of pressing challenges, including hospital waiting lists and small boat crossings. Guys, while you're here, make sure you hit the like button and share it across social media so others are notified of this video. And yes... His cabinet has been put together. He's had his first meeting uh, today and pretty much the work pretty much starts. It really is going to be, um, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. There's a, so much work to be done, so much uh, damage that has been done after 14 years. But a new era is upon us, guys, and it is our one under Prime Minister Keir Starmer. Whether you like him or not, and I know many people have questions and disagreements and whatnot about labor and i do too i have mine i have my fair share of, with it too but we don't have the same political party in power anymore guys it's the conservatives are in opposition now that is that is here guys so between now and the next four or five years we will judge and we will see just what this what this cabinet is going to do what this government is going to do and how it conducts itself going forward we don't want to hear scandals we don't want to hear we don't want to hear them breaking laws we don't want to hear dodgy dodgy things going up behind the scenes we want to see change we want to see the action in play it's going to take time but obviously the first 100 days is obviously going to be quite significant because obviously in the first 100 days what legislation changes as well is going to be very interesting to see what comes into play there's a lot to be had so let's get right into it guys so let's read what sky news has had to say here so the Prime Minister has told his top team is absolutely fantastic to welcome them to Downing Street, but warned there was a huge amount of work to of work to do. The Labour leader made a few changes to his front bench lineup that existed before the election. So among those around the table was number 10 Chancellor Rachel Reeves, the Home Secretary Yvette Cooper, and Deputy Prime Minister and Housing Secretary Angela Rayner. Now those are three ones that we had given. I've covered this on the live stream, but we'll, we'll I've covered it on the live stream anyway, but we'll talk about them here. Obviously, these were kind of given. We knew, obviously, in their shadow positions uh, when they were opposition, we knew that they were going to go into those positions. Yvette Cooper, in my opinion, I think is going to do a great job as Home Secretary. I think she's really going to have clear the backlogs. This is some, you know, she actually is not just going to waffle. I generally believe she will get get stuff done when it comes to dealing with the migration, dealing with the the backlogs. And I do think we're gonna we're gonna see a lot of it cleared out. A lot of people will get a lot of people deported. A lot of people will, will be cleared out. I really do think that will happen. It'll take time, and I know how people are feeling about an immigration, but I really do stress this. Give her a chance. This is, you know, give her a chance. She's got a wealth of experience and knowledge being in government as well. So uh, that's what I have to say about her. Rachel Reeves, obviously, there are. I do have some questions, questions about her. However, first female chancellor as well. I think that's quite momentous as well. We have to give good credit where credit is due to Labour there. I, I think she, that she she can, she wants to be a safe pair of hands, but at the same time, I hopefully she's not going to be too tight with the belt because obviously we do need some we do need Labour to put that we do need the government to put its hand in its pocket to get things done as well because if not, things are only going to get worse. Angela Rayner, obviously, someone who's very passionate about the house about housing, I general and deputy prime minister. I think that was a foregone conclusion, obviously. Again, I know some people keep saying Angela Rayner's eyeing up Keir Starmer a plot to stab her in the back and all this kind of stuff. Like, really, I haven't... Like, I, I don't keep hearing that stuff, guys. Like, it may happen. It may happen in a couple of years' time, maybe. Don't see it happening right now, guys. But in all seriousness, like, like she, she's experienced what it's like, you know, struggling, trying to get by. She will, obviously... I, ge I generally hope that she gets not just housing built, uh, working it with with communities and businesses and whatnot to get housing built, but affordable houses specifically, social housing, council housing, and getting a lot of homes that we already have built, which are empty, which are not being used, uh, which are all broken up, and 
working with uh, again with communities councils and whatnot to get them built up to places get them up to scratch so that that people can actually live in them in at least decent accommodation so let's hope for that <sighs> others attending were health secretary west streeting oh. you guys don't know how i feel about west streeting uh, education secretary bridget phillipson um i, I I'm, I'm confident in in bridget phillipson as education uh secretary certainly a lot better than the last one uh certainly a better last a lot better than our last education secretary that's for sure and uh foreign secretary david lammy i think david lammy um you know he 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 slowly kind of changed his his wordings and tune when it comes to about the situation in gaza for example so i'll be interested to see how he he plays his role as well but we know most of these slots most of these people were going to be in these slots from their shadow positions so again let's give them a chance and see what they do Shabina Mahmoud and Ed Miliband retained their respective justice and energy portfolios, while John Hesse stayed with Defence and John Alvarez for their business. Yep. Again, I've talked about some of these already in the live stream, uh, the last live stream of the general election, obviously. So if you guys want to check that out, you can there. However, Sakir picked experienced human rights lawyer Richard Helmer Casey for Attorney General, rather than Henry Thornberry, who held the shadow role prior to the election. This is a huge, um, this is a huge thing. I also recommend checking out the video. That feel from a different bias put up with regards to some to these these appointments. It's very very good, very very good. And he was saying obviously about Richard uh, Helmer Casey, and you know this is this is not a political person. This is someone who's an expert in in this, who who has knowledge here. They've hired some experts into this cabinet, not Labour people, independent, which I think is a very good thing. And he will become a peer to take up the top uh, top uh, law officer job as well. Uh, flanked by Miss Rayner and Cabinet Secretary uh, and the Cabinet Secretary Simon Case, uh, Simon Case, who reportedly will be stepping down, uh, Sakir told his team, "Look, colleagues, it is absolutely fantastic to welcome you to the Cabinet, our first meeting, and it was absolute honour, privilege to, of my life to be invited to the King, His Majesty, uh, the King, yesterday, former government, and to form the Labour government of 2024." Yep. Now we have to hold our coming first meeting, so I welcome you to it. We have a huge amount of work to do, so let's get on with our work. Loud applause. High on the cabinet agenda will likely be the first six steps set out by the Labour's manifesto. Deliver economic stability, cutting NHS waiting times, launching a new border security command, uh, creating Great British energy, cracking down on anti-social behaviour and recruiting 6,500 new teachers. Yeah, all these, these are the things, obviously, that they put down in their manifesto. And obviously, how they're going to get about a lot of these things is obviously time will tell. But I believe over time, more and more information about how they go about these things will, will come to fruition. The new Prime Minister faces a series of challenges on taking office, including the NHS waiting list of 6.3 million patients. Yep, that's obviously the pressure going to be on West Street Team, who, by a shadow of a doubt, I do not trust whatsoever. Um, but if, in all seriousness, yeah, if he cuts the waiting list down, you know, if you aren't paying out of your pocket, yeah, for NHS, I guess, yeah, you can give him the credit. But I seriously do not trust that man one bit. But if he does the work, if he actually shows, if he actually reforms the NHS for the benefit of the British public, then I'll take my hats off to him. But until, as of right now, I don't trust him whatsoever. A small boat crisis in the channel, an overstretched prison system and a sluggish economic growth. Um... Yeah, these these are major major challenges they got ahead of us. Yeah, the small boats crisis in the channel, people are literally dying crossing in those channels. They've got to tackle that small boat crisis. Innocent people crossing that channel, those migrants are dying, and it needs to stop. And they need to the, needs better cooperation with the French authorities as well to ensure they stop crossing in the first place as well. Overstretched prison system, that's a massive massive reforms, massive amount of work needs to be done there. But it also it's not just about obviously uh, reducing the, the prisons. It's also about reforming the criminal system. And rehabilitation of of those who have been uh, I've talked about this in the past about the rehabilitation and trying to stop the cause of people going to crime in the first place. That's going to be the the challenge there. Sluggish economic growth, obviously, that's tied into Brexit, it costs a living crisis and whatnot. We're aware of that. The scale of problems will be addressed, but underlined by Environment Secretary Steve Rees, who told colleagues it will take years to tackle the sewage and nature crisis. Yeah, um, yeah. As much as I, I understand how people feel about um. The sewage, obviously, it's going to take a while to deal with. It's not going to be done overnight. They're not going to be able to clear all the sewage out of the rivers. It's going to take time. 
But I just hope they throw the book at the, the water company. They really do. They should nationalize them. We know they should nationalize them. Um, but yeah, that's 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 a real, real damning one. There is no sugar cane in the face of crisis point. Record levels of sewage in our rivers, lakes and seas. Nature is dying. Confidence among farmers is lowest on record. And it will take years to reverse this damage, but the work of change begins now. Yeah, winning the, the confidence of farmers is going to be a big challenge as well because a lot of farmers lost confidence in the Conservative government. So that's going to take a challenge as well, obviously, winning that, winning over them as well. Leaving number 10 down, uh, leaving number 10, Mr. Street, saying the first meeting was very good at We'll get into work straight away. Ursa Mr. Miliband who served the Gordon Brown's cabinet and was later Labour leader said it's good to be back. Sakir so Julia the face question said his first new conference as Prime Minister. Uh, he will make his debut on the international stage just days into his appointment where he travelled to Washington DC next week for his NATO Leaders Summit. Uh, by the way, just for reference, I'm recording this on Saturday, the sixth of July. Uh, anyone wanting to know the reference or the date and time a uh, date of this. And also host the European Political Commu uh, Community Summit in the UK on the 18th of July as well. In his first speech as Prime Minister on the, on the steps of Downing Street, Sakir, who said he will not work past 6pm on Friday and to spend time with his family, promised the new government he will serve you and the policies, uh, politics can be a force for good. Like, people should not read too much into that. Should not read too much into that. Our country has voted decisively for change for national renewal and our return to politics to public service, he said. The work is urgent and we begin it today. Yes. Their work is urgent, and and as of right now, they are literally getting on with the work, um, and more more of things and po policies and political change will start coming in over time. It will take time, but we just have to give it a bit of patience. I understand, but we also must remember that whenever they introduce things or bring things forward, obviously we have to hold them to account. Obviously, for example, the two-child benefit cap. You know, many of us have how we feel about that, for example. You know, we, when is the when is it going to get rid of the the no fault evictions, for example? The sooner that goes, the better as well. So there's just just two examples right there of some of the challenges that that lie ahead of us. Obviously, we have many we have a homelessness crisis as well. Many home people are, are found themselves homeless as well. What are we doing to help them? Um, obviously, veterans are uh, veterans in some of our veterans what we're we doing to improve their lives because because their some of their lives have been worse off under 14 years of the conservative rule those are just uh just small examples you know we have a police force that's obviously that have we don't have trust and confidences what are we doing to bring back bring back the confidence and trust of police lots of questions not enough answers as of right now but we but obviously first 100 days will be crucial and we will see within the first 100 days what uh prime minister keir starmer and his cabinet will do in that time very looking much looking forward to the first prime minister's questions which i'm sure will be in a few weeks time and as well the king's speech so we'll be looking forward to that i will be covering the first prime minister's questions live on this channel um, i don't have the date for it yet but obviously it will be within a few weeks i'm sure guys but let me know what you guys honestly think about sakir starmer's cabinet what do you guys make of some of the appointees what do you guys actually make of some of the things that he said so far what are your hopes and expectations in the first 100 days as uh, Keir Starmer's Prime Ministership? What are you expecting within the next couple of weeks? What are you expecting to be done straight away? Let me know your thoughts and more in the comments section down below. If you found this video interesting, please hit the like button. It would be greatly appreciated. Share it across social media so others are notified of this video. And subscribe because it really does help support the channel. And if you want to go one step further, financially support me and the work that I do here, you could do so by becoming a YouTube member for as little as 99p. Or you can join me on Rumble or Patreon for exclusive content on those platforms. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope to catch you all very, very soon.